This and the next segment focus on violence against journalists and human rights defenders. In this particular segment, I will present the overall context and situation, including figures related to the violence, the type of violence, the perpetrators, and the root causes. I will also briefly highlight the measures that some journalists and their employers have taken to respond to the violence and protect themselves properly. Genes Bedoya Lima is a Colombian journalist who was kidnapped at the gate of La Modelo, a prison in Bogota, while working on uncovering an arms trafficking network operating inside the prison. She was drugged, beaten, raped, stripped naked, and left her abandoned on a highway. Lima's life is still threatened and the perpetrators of the brutal assault have not been brought to justice. She has considered suicide but remained committed to journalism. She recounts, The deepest pain led me to understand that my strength was in words. My words saved me because they gave me meaning to my life. To those who read this today, I want to say that their words can transform the lives of others. Words can indeed change the world. And we, as journalists, have a huge responsibility in this regard. Our words can still fight or bury the hope of change forever. Violence against journalists and human rights defenders in all its form, from harassment to arbitrary detention, and in the worst cases, murder, directly undermine freedom of expression and freedom of information, and in turn, the foundation of democracy. Free media contributes in building inclusive knowledge societies and democracies and in fostering intercultural dialogue, peace and good governance. Similarly, human rights defenders contribute to the improvement of social, political and economic conditions the reduction of social and political tensions, and a greater awareness of human rights. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, 1,190 journalists have been killed since 1992. In 2015, 73 journalists were killed globally, with Syria in the lead with 14 deaths, while in 1992, 42 journalists were murdered. Well, at the time, Turkey was the country with the highest number of slain journalists. The majority of killings in 2015 were of journalists who covered politics, with those who covered war and human rights trailing very close behind. The deadliest countries for journalists were first and foremost countries at war, including Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and South Sudan. This is a pattern that has been well established and evidenced over the years. But the list compiled by press freedom organizations also include countries which are well established peaceful countries or new democracies. For instance, France, Brazil, India, Mexico, partly confirming a trend that has also been reported for close to a decade concerning the killings of journalists in nominal democracies. France last year stood out in the list, demonstrating the global reach of non-state terrorist groups and uh, their killings of journalists. The situation with violence against human rights defenders is just as bleak. In his 2015 report, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights Defenders declared, and I quote, the evidence is oppressive. Everywhere in today's world, the situation defenders find themselves give rise to multiple concerns. In very many countries, the situation is getting worse by the day. The uh, non-governmental organization Frontline Defenders support this statement. In 2014, the NGOs has highlighted 
the viral spread of regressive laws targeting NGOs and human rights defenders. A development, the organization said, escalated in 2015, going beyond restrictions on funding to include new efforts to use the law to break contact between human rights defenders and their international partners and supporters. Frontline defenders estimate that 156 human rights defenders were killed or died in detention in 25 countries in the first 11 months of 2015. 45% of the killings were linked to the defense of environmental, land and indigenous people's rights, particularly in Central America. This marked an increase over the previous years, both in the number of killings and in the number of countries where they occurred. From a gender standpoint, women are as vulnerable as men to acts of violence, as the example of the Colombian journalist above highlight. But they are particularly more vulnerable than men to online harassment and threats. The International Women's Media Foundation and the International News Safety Institute determined that nearly two-thirds of female journalists experience acts of intimidation, threats and abuse in relation to their work. The nature of the harm committed against women is also very gender-sensitive, gender-based and tend to include sexual violence and rape, as again the previous example and unfortunately many more highlight. So what are the root causes of this violence? Global instability, further deterioration of conflict, endemic violence linked to trafficking in peoples or drugs, greed and corruptions. These are the root factors behind the violence against journalists and human rights defenders and at the heart of it is the necessity by those in power to silence those that want to report on their behaviors and their abuse of power. Let me highlight a few more of these root causes because they are a very good reflection of the um, environment within which journalists operate, but also the environment for freedom of expression more generally. And I have probably already highlighted a few of them. The first is insecurity and terrorism, which, as I will describe later on, is one of the main causes of violence against journalists, but also the state responses to insecurity and terrorism. The policies that entail restrictions on individual freedom and actions by civil society under the pretext that this affords better protection of the general interest. Freedom House has described the world of 2015 as battered by crisis that fueled xenophobic sentiment in democratic countries, undermined the economy of state dependent on the sale of natural resources and led authoritarian regime to crack down order on dissent. These developments have contributed to the tenth consecutive year of decline in global freedom and many of the factors that they have identified are actually behind the uh, violence against journalists and human rights defenders. One does not need to look long before finding xenophobic or hostile messages against refugees, religious minorities, as well as those who protect those vulnerable persons or group. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights has stressed that stigmatizing statements may contribute to exacerbate the climate of hostility, intolerance and rejection from different sectors of the population and could lead to an impairment of life and physical integrity of human rights defenders, particularly when these accusations are made in the context of armed conflict. The Committee to Protect Journalists has identified the major per perpetrators of murders of journalists in 2015 to be political groups, military officials, government officials, followed by criminal groups and local residents. 
historically, political groups have been the main aggressors, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists' data, and indeed according to many other data, from reporters to uh, without borders to uh, local organizations who, in specific countries, protect journalists uh, and human rights defenders. When it comes to perpetrators of violence, state authorities are indeed the most common violators. Police and other law enforcement generally lead the fray in committing acts of violence against human rights defenders. But armed groups, including terrorist groups, have become as well a main source of violence. According to Reporters Without Borders, and I quote here, the jihadis regard journalists simply as military targets to be eliminated. Jihad's targets include not only political leaders, economic infrastructure, and military installations, but also media personalities and media centers. Of the 54 journalists taken hostage worldwide in 2015, 26 were captured in Syria. The great majority were local journalists, generally arrested and tried in ISIS courts. Some of them were put to death. In Latin America, drug cartels, the so-called narcos, are also responsible for many killings of journalists and human rights defenders, often enough in, um, in a relationship with the political leadership at the heart of uh, the killings of journalists and human rights defenders in Central America, including Mexico, which is uh, a country that I know quite well, there is this relationship between some in the political establishment and the cartels and, and narcos, making it very difficult to fight back. So um, what, what has been done to respond to those acts of violence, in fact, to the increasing act of violence against journalists and defenders? Uh, the journalists themselves, the defenders, press freedom organizations, the media have become increasingly aware of the risk attached to the profession and of the necessity to strengthen security and protection. Prevention is the best measure that can be taken. Over the last five years or so, a number of security instruments, security trainings have been developed to assist journalists and their employers in conducting risk assessment and in identifying the measures to prevent uh, uh, acts of violence, or rather the measures that they can uh, take to prevent themselves to become a target for an act of violence. The journalists, their colleagues and their employers have been involved and are the focus of measures for security and protection from proper assessment and responses, including digital security, to a range of um, online measures that has been put in place to ensure that uh, journalists can be better protected. For instance, the culture of safety's global safety principle and practice released in February 2015 focus on a range of journalists, particularly freelance journalists that are often the most vulnerable because they do not have a large um, companies or employer protecting them. 77 media organizations committed to practicing and implementing the guidelines. In October 2015, 10 major news broadcasters, along with NGOs, signed onto the principle. The steps exemplify the uh, heightened importance of strengthening protection measures as well as the growing solidarity between media and NGO sectors. And there are a couple of uh, supplementary videos which I hope you will um, look, which identify and um, describe the kind of security measures that journalists and defenders have taken. Before ending this uh, segment, I wanted to mention one particular form of violence against journalists and defenders, uh, which are the reprisals. 
In recent years, a new issue has come to dominate the agenda of international gathering, the question of reprisal. These are acts attributable to state party officials or carried out with their consent or acquiescence against any person or group in retaliation for cooperating with a UN agency or an independent UN expert. A review of the evidence of reprisals indicate that the victims are targeted because they have or are seeking to pass on information to uh, official uh, UN, uh, UN staff. They participate to UN event or seeking authorization to participate to, uh, to a UN uh, meeting. Reprisals are all about intimidating and silencing those that could shed the light on the, um, the misbehavior, uh, the abuse, and the violations committed in a given country. They have become, unfortunately, part and parcel of a global multi-layered phenomenon, which is targeting not just the free flow of information, but also uh, accountability by and through uh, global processes and particularly the United Nations. For instance, human rights defenders from Bahrain were prevented from traveling to Geneva to attend a very important human rights meeting in June 2016. All of them were prevented from participating. The only one that were present at the meeting are those that live in exile. Reprisals on their own are terrible human tragedies for which redress must be sought. But they are also part of a global systematic targeting of independent voices. And then for, therefore, they, they are the symptom of a much greater, graver crisis. The United Nations and many member states have taken the issue of reprisal very seriously. The UN General Secretary has issued a report and identified specific measures which are currently put in place, such as a common policy on reprisal, the adoption of focal point within various UN system uh, and, and agencies, the denunciation of, of reprisals. Uh, unfortunately, as a very recent examples in uh, June 2016 in Geneva highlight, and the fact that um, human rights activists were prevented from attending that meeting demonstrate that reprisals are very difficult to respond to effectively and that we need to look for uh, additional and new measures to ensure that the free flow of information, particularly over human rights violations, is protected.